Hey y'all, it's Jess. So, last week on my other video, someone commented asking if I would talk about PTSD in autistic people. So, I'm going to talk about it. So I want to talk about a specific type of PTSD, which is called Post Traumatic Stress Disorder of Abandonment, or Abandonment Trauma. And this is when someone that is in your life abandons you, and it has a biological impact on the pain centers in your brain and physically changes your fight-flight response so that you're more sensitive to being stressed or emotionally overloaded. Um, and it changes the way that you think about people, especially people close to you. Anyone can experience abandonment trauma when someone that they loved and trusted uh, abandons them. But for autistic people, it is much more impactful, I think for a few reasons. First, because we don't notice nonverbal cues and red flags that might be going off that other people would recognize. And so instead of gradually realizing that someone is stepping back from being in that place in our lives, it feels like everything is going great and then all of a sudden they don't want to be friends with us anymore. And we are like, what did I do? Did something like one little thing go wrong when it really it was a bunch of stuff that was building up in this person that just made them realize for multiple reasons just that I don't think I should be in this person's life anymore and that happens to everyone and you've probably made a friend and said oh actually I don't really get along with this person very well or our personalities clash or anything like that and you've had to step back and create boundaries it becomes post-traumatic stress disorder of abandonment when it causes a bunch of things in your life after this happens, such as mistrust in others, anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, and there's a lot of different ways that people handle it. The results of this kind of abandonment, it kind of goes in two separate ways. So, well, it could all be combined in any way, but you, you have a higher chance of forming abusive relationships, you have lower standards because you'll just accept anyone into your life because you really want people in your life and you might become too loyal to the wrong people. Um, you might also feel like you're missing a part of yourself and you're constantly reaching out to people to try and fill that hole in your heart that that other person or other people left. And you're constantly expecting stuff of people that they're not able to fulfill. I kind of did that a little bit but I kind of went more on the other side, whereas I shut everyone out and I isolated myself uh, to prevent myself from being hurt again. And I was unable to form lasting friendships. I, I never knew how to make friends. Um, like, I remember in, like, elementary school, like, you just kind of talk to people and then you kind of get along or you don't. Um, but after that happened, I, I never could figure out how to make friends. I have another video on um, making friends as an autistic person where I just talk about like I never had a system for how to like go up to a friend, talk to them and figure out if I want to be their friend, blah, 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 blah. I never knew how to do that. So personally, this happened to me when I was 13. It was a friend that I had had since I was like maybe two or three years old. Their, whole, their, their entire family was friends with my family and we were, we were just like one big family. Um, I don't want to reveal any names or anything, and I've since reconciled with this person. But it wasn't until earlier this year that I realized the impact that it had had on me was not just... I knew it wasn't normal for, you know, it, like, the amount of things that changed in my life because of it. Um, but I realized why was because I had PTSD from it. And so... A lot of different stuff that wouldn't normally happen to most people from getting left by a friend happened to me. So for seven years, I, would, I became withdrawn, became extremely depressed, uh, built up a lot of anxiety, uh, which also caused a bunch of other mental issues to go on because I was so emotionally overwhelmed. I didn't know I was autistic, so I didn't know how to take care of myself. and. I also couldn't connect with other people in the same way that, in the way that I thought was actually connecting with people. And so I just shut everyone out. I would sit in my room in here. The, the, the walls used to be turquoise, dark turquoise and dark green, and I had blackout curtains. My bed was over here, and I would just sit in my bed in the darkness, like 
it, I, I didn't handle anything in a healthy way because I did not, I was not equipped to, and I didn't know I had PTSD from this. I'd reconciled with this person a few years ago, maybe I was 20, yeah, four years ago. Um, I still had issues with depression and stuff that was probably because of undiagnosed autism and not treating myself right and stuff, but because of that, I had a lot of reconciliation in myself after finding out what this was, PTSD of abandonment because I'm autistic. And if you've related to my story, then you might have PTSD from a friend or a family member or so, someone close to you leaving you. Don't just accept everyone who comes into your life and pledge your undying loyalty to them. People who our true friends won't have to worry about what you're doing for them. You don't have to perform to keep a friend. True friends are people who love and care for you as you are. And so keep your standards high for people who you invite into your life. So I hope that I have explained a little bit and given you my personal take on it and that you've gotten something. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye.